now that we went over the different types of epithelial tissue, we talked about the surface epithelium, the glandular epithelium, what characterize each of them, how they are subdivided. It is pretty simple for you to remember the functions of the epithelial tissue. The first one is protection. Then what comes to your mind is the epidermis of your skin that's made of several layers to resist abrasion, right? That protects us. Also, we talked about the goblet cells that produce mucus, they secrete mucus. That makes you recall that another function of the epithelial tissue is secretion. Also, I mentioned that we have epithelial tissue in very small structures that we find within the kidneys that are responsible for filtering the blood. And we'll talk in details about that when we cover the urinary system. But for now, what you need to know is that when our blood is being filtered, lots of excretion happens. So excretion is also a function of the epithelial tissue. If you think about the microvilli I mentioned to you when we were talking about the intestines, and I told you that microvilli increase the surface area, and with that, microvilli increase the absorption rate. So absorption is also a function of the epithelial tissue. And lastly, we have here the sensory function. And the sensory function of the epithelial tissue comes from the fact that we have specialized epithelial cells at the top part of our nasal cavity, so inside our nose. And those specialized epithelial cells are related to the sensation of smell. We also have specialized epithelial cells inside our ear. And those epithelial cells are related to hearing and equilibrium. We also find specialized epithelial cells within taste buds. And those epithelial cells are related to taste. So, since we have epithelial cells related to olfaction, which is smell, hearing, equilibrium, and also taste, we say that epithelial tissue has also a sensory function.